Buggity, buggity, get up off your feet! Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to another edition of the DW Show, a special edition. Now what am I? Am I crazy? Every edition of the DW Show is special. So, but this one is really special because we just ended up an exciting season. And of course, we're on the eve of Thanksgiving. And by the way, I hope you've got that big old turkey ready to go in the oven or deep fry that bad boy or whatever you do for the holidays for this. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. You know why? Because you don't have to, it's not about gifts, it's not about anything, but getting together, having some fellowship, having food on the table, every kind of imaginable thing in the world you can eat, and getting and just spending time together with your family and reflecting and being thankful. And man, do we have a lot to be thankful for? I, we listen, just we really do. We can complain and and we can always find things that we're unhappy about, but I, I really believe if you sit down and, and, and you count your blessings, that they far outweigh uh, things that we are concerned about or worried about. Uh, sure, I know some people are still maybe not employed uh, at the job they like, or maybe they don't have a job, but there are friends. When you have friends, and you have your health, and you have the Lord, I mean, you can get through it. And so I hope, I hope your table is covered with the bounty of your hard work this year. I hope you're with your family. I hope you're having a, a good time uh, watching some football and uh, just spending some quality time with your kids and your loved ones. So uh, that's my little Thanksgiving message. But hey, ha -ha, how about that race? Huh? How about that final race of the year? Was that not the most unbelievable race you've ever seen? Here's what I liked about it. It's the first time the champion has won the final race. And I, it just hadn't happened before. A couple other things never happened before. Tony Stewart had five wins in the chase. Can you believe? And, and I don't, I'm not going to rehash all this. You've heard a million times. But the man going into the chase that he had no business being in it, dominated it, and won the championship. Um, and I, I can tell you why. And it, it was pretty obvious to me. As you know, I sat down and talked to Tony and Carl on Thursday. Saw some of that on speed. But from the time I met up with Tony Stewart on Thursday until he got out of that race car Sunday night, he never, ever, ever considered anything but winning. The energy that man had, his body language, his energy, it, it was so positive. Uh, he was a man that was possessed. I mean, he never considered. I never heard him one time say, well, if we win. Only thing I ever heard him say, uh, if we lose. Only thing I ever heard him say is, we have nothing to lose. But he never said he was going to lose. Matter of fact, quite the opposite. He was like Muhammad Ali. I'm telling you, he had old Carl on the ropes from the very get-go. And Carl was like, in that interview, Carl was like, whoa, where is this guy coming from? I just said, wow, what, what a positive force he is. And, and that's kind of the way uh, Tony went about the whole weekend. And, and, and listen, Carl did nothing wrong. Carl had the perfect weekend. He won practice. He won the pole. He led the most laps, but he finished second. And he and Tony tied. And I kind of was, you know, it didn't surprise me. As I looked at the point standings all through the year, a number of times throughout the year, no matter what position it was in, there were a lot of guys that were tied with, for points. And so it didn't surprise me that they came down to a tie. And that's where those wins, you wanted wins to be important, they were. Carl went into the chase with a three-point advantage for the one win he had way back in March. Carl went into the last race of the year with those three points being the difference in he and Tony. Tony, on the other hand, with the wins he had, the bonus points he got, he was, over, he was able to overcome Carl's consistency. And so Tony won because of wins. And Carl had the lead going into the last race because of a win. So I think NASCAR got it right. Uh, you can do it one or two ways. You can be consistent, and Carl was a, I, I think Carl set a uh, record for average finish in the chase. He only had one finish outside the top ten. That was 11th at Talladega. But Tony set a record for wins in the chase. And so you can win races and be a champion, or you can take the consistency route and be right there with the guy. So I think NASCAR's got it right. I hope they don't really, 
I don't think it needs to be tweaked. Not for next year, anyway. But back to Tony. When I talked to him, every time I talked to him, he had the trophy sitting there right beside us. He said, shiny, he said, I want my name on there. I want to be able to see it. I want to really polish that bad boy up. And I want to, and Carl, you don't have a chance. I mean, you don't have a chance, Carl. And, and Carl was, I'm telling you, Carl was like this whole time. He didn't know what to say. But when we got to the track, I thought, well, Carl's a smart guy. We got to the track. Carl puts helmet on. He gets ready to go on the track. He let his car do his talking. And I thought maybe, I thought maybe Tony had overloaded himself a little bit. Too much talking and not enough action. But no way. That man was not going to be denied. And I, I, I never saw a drive like he made. I got, if you watched the race, I know you did, people cut him a lot of slack. And some of those restarts, when he went three and four wide, people moved over and let him go. When he come up on people and put that slide job on them, people moved over and let him go. So, and I'm glad. Uh, they weren't showing any favoritism. They did the same thing for Carl. That race, the, it couldn't have been run any better. Uh, both drivers were, uh, all the other drivers treated both the guys with a lot of respect, gave them plenty of room. They were not, no other driver was a factor. Tony had a little problem in the very beginning. That went away and it was head to head. Best man wins, winner takes all. Tony Stewart loves to gamble. And I thought maybe with all that talking he was doing, I thought he was bluffing. But let me tell you, when Tony Stewart looks in his hand and he looks at you and he says, you ain't got a chance, I bet next time Carl will say, yikes, he's, I don't have a chance. I bet next time Carl says, uh, he ain't bluffing because I'm pretty sure Carl thought he was. So anyway, will these two be at it again next year? Don't know. Here's an ironic thing. The 48 car gets the number one garage stall every week because he's the champion. Every time we show up the track, the 48's going to be in the same spot every time because he's the champion. That's, that's going to be a big change for 048. 05 time is going to have to look for his car for a change. But Tony Stewart's car now will be in the number one garage stall. And right next to him will be Carl Edwards for the first five races because they go off the points from the year before. So I got an idea, knowing Tony the way I do, he's probably going to walk in Probably gonna walk in with this under one arm and that Sprint Cup trophy under the other. And he's probably gonna set that trophy right on top of his car. And he's probably gonna look at Carl and say, I told you so. Carl, don't hang your head, buddy. You got beat by a two-time champion. You got beat by a guy that was not gonna be denied. And the way you handled yourself when that race was over with, classy, buddy. Now you know, Carl knows this, and you folks there, you always want to debate it. I've said, for at least five years now, if I was going to start a team tomorrow, who would be my driver? Now, I know you said, oh, you said Cal Bush. No, I didn't. I said, who would be my driver? Carl Edwards would be my driver. He represents this sport the way, just like he's a champion. He represents this sport with class, with dignity, with style. And, uh, yeah, I know. You said, well, what about that? What about No, no, no. You look at the interviews he does. You look at the, the commercials he does. He has, he gets it. He has a lot of respect for this sport, has a lot of respect for people in this sport, and he has a lot of respect for where this sport is going, and he's going to be a huge part of it. He's gotten beaten this championship a couple of times now. He's learning every time he does. That's the thing he said he was going to take away. I'm going to walk away from here, and this is going to make me better. Carl, you don't have to be much better, buddy, and you may end up being a five-time champion. I'm proud of both these guys. I love smoke. I mean, he's sitting there right now with the slits in one hand and a slice of pizza in the other, and he's celebrating. Carl, on the other hand, he's sitting over there with a, with a protein shake and thinking about going on a mountain bike ride. They're two totally different guys. Hey, one little tidbit. Carl's right-handed. Tony's left-handed. That left, maybe that left hand came out of nowhere, and that was the knockout punch that Tony needed. Sure looked that way to me. Have a great Thanksgiving. I'm not done. Uh, this is not the last show of the year. We'll be back in a week or two, maybe around the championship, give you some highlights and, and some information or things. By the way, Steve Addington is going to, uh, he's left Penske. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a known fact. Uh, I'm, I'm, I can tell you with what I know, and unless things change, and they can overnight, uh, Darian Grubb won't be Tony's crew chief. 
uh, Steve's going to Steve Addington is going to Stuart Haas. Greg Zipadelli is in the mix. Uh, Tony is trying. Somebody said, you, you know, a team needs to stick together. I think Tony's trying to put his old team back together. You don't know Ronnie Crooks, but he's a real sharp guy in the engineering department. Tony hired him from Gibbs at the beginning of uh, at the, of the beginning of the year. He's trying to get Greg over there. He has a relationship with Addington. I think Tony's trying to bring his old buddies all back together for one last stand. Because I don't think this week, I don't think this year was the last stand. I don't think it's the last one, time we're going to hear about Tony Stewart. And I think he wants to celebrate with some of his old friends one more time. Barroom buddies. They're the best kind.